you're watching this video, you were probably selected in the H1B visa lottery. So first off, congratulations, you're one of the few. Now, on to the next step. What do you do now that you were selected in the H1B visa lottery? Welcome back, my name is Jeremy Richards. I am a immigration lawyer with the law offices of Richards and Jerusik, where we solely practice US immigration law. We have offices in Buffalo, New York, and in Toronto, Canada. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel for upcoming videos. Hit the like button, uh, hit the reminder button so when new videos come out, you'll get a notification. Also down below in the comments, we have a lot of helpful information that's related to this video and to US immigration in general. Also, you'll find a link to our podcast, or our ride podcast, where we talk about US immigration law, as well as a place where you can subscribe to our, our blog, where we publish information on a regular basis about US immigration FAQs. First off, if you were selected in the H-1B visa lottery, congratulations. Uh, According to our estimation, this past lottery year, only about 10% of the people that entered into the lottery were selected. So it was truly a lottery and you're truly a winner if you got in. Uh, now, once you've been selected into the H-1B visa lottery, you'll be notified, your, the petitioner or your employer will be notified through their USCIS account of the selection. So they'll need to log into their account and verify that selection. And this is very important because in that selection, there will be an I-797 notice of action. And that's an official form from USCIS that will indicate that you were selected in the lottery. Now, this is a very important document and it must be filed along with the corresponding I-129 petition after your selection. And there is an expiration date. Uh, if you were selected in the lottery and you do not file by the time indicated on that selection notice, then your case can be rejected or denied and you'll lose out on your lottery selection. Typically, that is by June 30th of the selection year. So make sure that you download, you review, analyze the I-797 selection notice and make sure that you are fully aware of the filing deadline and make sure you get it filed by that deadline. In addition, there's some other important information on that selection notice. One of the pieces of information is the name of the beneficiary, also the name of the company. Only the company indicated on that selection notice is able to use that lottery selection to file the I-129 petition. If a company other than the one listed on that selection notice files, it will be rejected or denied, and it is not transferable. That company cannot, that selection cannot be used by another company. It has to be the company that's indicated on the selection notice. In addition, the beneficiary, the employee listed on that selection notice is the only one that that petitioner or employer can use that selection notice for. It cannot be transferred or used for another employee, only the employee listed. So neither the company or the beneficiary can be transferred on that selection notice. Now, what do you do with that selection notice? It is important, as I stated earlier, that you prepare and file Form I-129 petition for a non-immigrant worker with USCIS to the address that's indicated on that selection notice. It will indicate the filing address for this special selection. So make sure it's filed with that address indicated on the selection notice by the deadline, June 30th, if, if that's what it's indicated on your notice. In addition to that, there is a lot of required supporting documents that must go along with this type of application, similar to any other H-1B petition filed uh, by an employer. At a minimum, an H-1B petition based on a H-1B visa lottery selection has to include the following. First, a copy of the selection notice that clearly indicates the company and the beneficiary. Second, USCIS Form I-129, petition for non-immigrant worker, in addition to the H supplements for that I-129. 
Third, make sure you include all the proper filing fees. If you're paying by check, make sure that they are filled out correctly. USCIS also likes those checks cut separately for each of the different fees. Uh, so make sure that you have the proper fees included. If you don't include the proper fees, your case could be rejected. And if you're filing at the end of the deadline, that means you could miss out on the slaughter selection. So make sure you include those proper fees. A labor condition application, or what is referred to as an LCA from the U.S. Department of Labor. That LCA must cover the position in the area of intended employment for the duration of that employment and must be certified by the U.S. Department of Labor and included in your petition. If the employee is already in the United States, then you must provide supporting evidence that that employee has maintained their status in the United States if they're seeking to extend their status or to change their status here in the United States. They must prove that they have properly maintained that status and therefore qualify. In this case, you're probably changing your status from uh, either a student visa or an other status here in the United States to the H-1B based on the lottery selection. Next, you need to show that the beneficiary, the employee that you are petitioning qualifies for a specialty occupation and has the necessary education, credentials, uh, experience, licenses that are required to perform the duties of the specialty occupation that they are being petitioned for. And finally, the employer needs to provide sufficient evidence that the position being offered to the beneficiary is in fact a specialty occupation, that the duties being performed are those of the specialty occupation, and that this position in general in the industry requires at a minimum a bachelor's degree or its equivalent for entry into the profession. If you have any other questions about the H-1B lottery, the selection process, and how to file, properly file an I-129 petition based on an H-1B lottery selection, we can help. We do this every year. We've handled thousands of H-1B petitions and helped many employers and employees through the lottery process. Feel free to give us a call, visit our website, shoot us an email, uh, look in the comments below for additional information. If you haven't already, again, please subscribe, share, like, uh, visit the comments below for more additional information about H-1Bs and U.S. immigration in general. Thank you for watching and have a great day.